What's going on everybody? Uh, Daniel Worthy here and uh, about a week or two ago I had somebody request to see what plugins and extensions I use inside of Visual Studio and so today I just wanted to do a quick video and show you guys uh, a lot of the extensions I use uh, for Visual Studio now. Um, this may be a little bit dated. I'm using uh, Visual Studio 2013 Community Edition and uh, some of these extensions are will be automatically included inside of uh, Visual Studio 2015 when it's released. So let's go ahead and just dive in and look at uh, what's installed um, on this uh, on on my box here. I do have some different extensions on my work PC, but that's just due to uh, needing them for specific tasks that aren't related to what I do here at home. So the first one we have is Application Insights Tool, uh, which is installed by default by Visual Studio, which um, I never, I, I don't know what it does, and I kind of just ignore it. Uh, Behavior SDK, XAML, again, installed by default. Um, Error Watcher, this one is pretty cool. It's Matt, made by Matt Christ, Christiansen. Um, he is, uh, I would say he's definitely one of the top Visual Studio uh, extension developers. He's uh, the author behind Web Essentials. Um, this is a great little tool that um, will add a little pop-up bubble uh, to the top right-hand side of your uh, your uh, code document that will let you know how many errors, warnings, and messages there are for that document. For some reason, uh, it's not working on uh, my current um, uh, PC. Uh, it works fine on my work PC. Don't know why, but other than that, it's it's pretty great. Uh, we have all uh, the uh, second one that uh, I have that isn't installed by default is um, it is Grunt Launcher um, and what this uh, does is it's a great tool um, that I believe is probably going to be included in 20, uh, 2015 edition uh, that adds uh, Grunt compatibility into Visual Studio so if we look at let me see if I can if my zoom is working yeah there we go so if I right click on my Grunt file or inside the solution, I get um, a grunt uh, context menu inside of it. Um, so I can run my grunt, my grunt package, my JS hint. I can run any of my grunt tasks here. Um, so it's it's a nice tool if you are uh, if you're using grunt inside of your Visual Studio projects, and um, and and want and and don't feel like using the command line all the time. Now it's accidentally open the close the window. So the uh, the third one is the in, our indent guides, and essentially this is just a code cleanliness thing for me. I like to uh, be able to visually see all my uh, my indentations, uh, and so this adds just a, a, a one pixel border through it. Uh, Microsoft Advertising SDK, uh, I use development, uh, ASP.NET Net Web Tools. Um, Again, that's added by default. Um, Microsoft is managing uh, a lot of their stuff through these packages um, uh, instead of issuing service packs and stuff like that. So um, these two uh, for MVC5 scaffolding, both of them are on there by default. Now, uh, NuGet Package Manager, if you aren't familiar with NuGet, it's a really great uh, tool for managing uh, uh, your third-party packages uh, for Visual Studio. Um, so let's say, for instance, um, it, it, it's used for um, NED framework now. It's used for MV the MVC DLLs, uh, a lot of uh, the different components that come by uh, installed by default inside of Visual Studio uh, projects. But also, you can use it to find uh, new packages. And so you can access the manager by right-clicking on a project and uh, selecting uh, Manage NuGet Packages. And as you can see here, there's a, a, a bunch of already installed um, packages in the default uh, Visual Studio project. Um, I have Bootstrap, jQuery Validator, jQuery, JSON.net, ASP.NET, MVC, um, and, and the library is, is very, very large. So the next oh, window. Next one that we have on the list is Bower Package IntelliSense. Um, Bower is Node, I'm sorry, is NuGet, but um, it's primarily for front end tech. Uh, so you can also use it. And it looks like my webcam's crashed. Oh well. Um, there we go. Sorry. Um, you can use it for. Uh, 
managing stuff like uh, I'm sorry, uh, managing stuff like uh, jQuery uh, ag again, stuff that you could typically use uh, for um, NuGet, but it's not dependent on Visual Studio. A lot of our front-end developers where I work utilize it. PHP language support. I have this specifically when I want to go in and, man and edit a PHP file. Don't really rely on it. I just want it for the, the code uh, coloring and all that stuff. <laughs> Sidewaffle. Now this is a great, great tool. Um, it adds a, just a mess ton of um, file uh, templates and um, project templates. So if you, let's see here, go new file, web, hmm, okay, so it's not under that, file, new project, maybe. Um, so it adds a bunch of, where is it? Great. You know, the one time you, you need something, it's it never shows up. It adds a bunch of, um, here we go. It adds a bunch of those random file types that you don't, that you either have to do a lot of typing on when you first uh, it, add it, or um, some, at least on the Windows side, files that are harder to create, like uh, a, um, I think they have git ignore. They have a web essentials ignore, which is a dot we ignore, which is, unless you're doing it through console, is kind of a pain. Um, has a bunch of AngularJS pre-built uh, page templates. Um, grunt file, I mean, all sorts of, of, of great stuff here. Um, there's a uh, JSON hint, um, and I believe there are also uh, project templates associated with it. Anyway, there's a lot there, and there's just too much time to go over what that uh, plugin encompasses. Uh, then next is Snippet Designer. I really like this extension because I'm big on snippets. Um, so what this does, it adds a visual designer for creating uh, code snippets. So I'm going to jump into this layout.html. And so, for instance, two of the one of the snippets I created this morning is for uh, adding a div with a class. So I type div c and hit tab. And it's going to put my cursor automatically inside of the class file. I'm going to hit tab again. And it's going to put me inside of the content uh, div. When I'm done, I'm going to press enter. And I'm done. That's something that I that comes to default in a lot of different IDEs, but for some reason it wasn't added to Visual Studio, so I added I added that one. I also created one for dummy text. So if I type Lipson, hit tab, I, I get four lines of um, of uh, lorem ipsum text. Um, now what that is, what encompasses this is a very simple um, interface where you type out your code and utilize dollar signs and uh, tag names uh, for your content replacing. And I believe also you can add that when you're done, uh, this is where you end. Um, so anyway, it's a great tool, um, really good to, to play around with. It's one that I've used for a very long time. Moving on down the list, a uh, bunch of SQLite for Windows Phone and the Windows Runtime. I don't... Um, I only, I've only used this in my Windows 8 development, so it's it's nothing overly fancy. Uh, Task Runner Explorer. This is pretty neat um, if you're using Grunt or Bower or anything like that. Um, it's a entirely new window, and uh, essentially it crawls your web projects, and you can set up Grunt tasks to execute uh, in these specific areas. And so um, before build, after build, clean and open solution. <laughs> Now, typically in the past, what I've done is set up actual build events inside of a solution file for this, and uh, this makes a much cleaner interface so that, uh, for instance, I use Grunt Watch a lot, which it watches files and compiles them uh, when they're modified. Uh, so from here, I could literally drag the task over to execute when my solution is opened. A bunch of other kind of cool stuff there. Um, that's worth checking out. And then we have Trailing White Space Visualizer, another one by Mads Christensen. Um, Christensen. And what it does is if you have a bunch of extra white space on the end of a line, it highlights it for you, lets you know that that's worthless. So if I format the file, it gets trimmed. Um, nothing complicated, but it's, 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 it's a cleanliness tool. Visual Studio Spell Checker. I rely on this so much. Um, 
And so essentially what it is is it helps you find misspelled words. Um, if you're like me, you, you misspell a lot of stuff, so um, rely on it quite a bit. BSVim, I've done a video on this. It's a great tool. I wouldn't suggest it if you easily get frustrated at stuff, um, it, and if you're not, uh, if you're not uh, already f uh, somewhat familiar with how Vim works, what it does is it allows you to navigate your cursor completely with your keyboard. Um, allows you to code a lot quicker. I th I think um, there's a steep learning curve, and so that's why I say it's not the best for uh, people who get frustrated easily. Um, and then Web Essentials 2013 for update four. Uh, you could think of Web Essentials as kind of the testing grounds for new Visual Studio features. These get updated um, very frequently with a bunch of new features. Whatever I outline today will probably be out of date by the time you watch this video. Um, I've been using it pretty much since it came out for Visual Studio 2010 or 2012. I can't remember. Um, I saw it uh, after after watching a build conference on, that uh, Mads had, had done and uh, totally changed how I did development. Um, started using less and the built-in compression and uh, of CSS and JS quite a bit and I've got a bunch of other people to use it and we've all really liked it, its features. So anyway, that uh, that uh, covers just about all the, the extensions I use and rely on. Every once in a while I'll go through the, the gallery and see what's out there anything new to check out. Um, I, uh, one that I overlooked um, that I sometimes have is uh, something that integrates in with uh, version control. I think something is built into 2013 for um, Git. Uh, for some reason, I don't, I don't recall seeing that on my list, but I'm getting the, the uh, I'm get, maybe, it's, maybe it's an extension that's just not listed in the gallery. Oh well. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, check it out, and if you have any of your favorite that I missed, go ahead and drop it in the comment box, and uh, and I'll make sure to, to include uh, links to all my extensions inside of the description of this video. Anyway, appreciate it, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.